true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. Clinton Vance was a guy I went to school with. He was always a bit of a scaredy cat. So when he decided to take a summer job at the Sunset Pond's old age home, I couldn't believe it. It was Clinton's first day on the job, and head nurse Laidlaw assigned him to Mr. Siri for the day. This is Mr. Siri's banking day. Take him downtown, Clint, she barked. On the way to the bank, Clinton stopped to get himself a soda pop and Mr. Siri another packet of personal hankies. It couldn't have been gone more than five minutes, but they say that five minutes is all it takes. He handed Mr. Siri his tissues. The old guy didn't even say thank you. In fact, he didn't say a single word on the whole trip to the bank. Clinton just figured he was, like, moody. That is, until he brought the Sunset Palm station wagon to a stop in front of the bank, and Mr. Siri plopped over into his lap. Clinton panicked, assuming that he'd lose the job of a lifetime if anyone knew that someone, like, died while he was supposed to be looking after them. Clinton decided to complete Mr. Siri's business downtown, sneaking back into the Sunset Palms and straight into his own bed where it would be discovered that the poor old gent passed away in his sleep. Poor nervous Clint shivered worse than he did in biology class when he reached into Mr. Siri's breast pocket to pull out his bank book and deposit slip. After fumbling through several used hankies, he managed to shake it off and run into the bank. Inside the bank, Clinton made the deposit. But before he could run out, the clerk saw that there was a message on Mr. Sirius' file. They needed to head out to the bank manager's office to sign some papers. Poor Clinton went outside and hauled Mr. Siri out of the wagon and headed up the elevator to the 13th floor to meet with the manager. The security guard recognized old Mr. Siri and gave him a wave. Clinton waved Mr. Siri's arm back at him. Finally, they got up to the 13th floor. The bank manager greeted them grandly. <laughs> but also wondered if Mr. Siri was okay. Clinton explained that Mr. Siri was just really, really tired. When the bank manager slid the papers he needed signed across the desk, Clinton quickly pointed out the window, screaming that Donald Stump's helicopter was soaring by. As soon as the manager turned his back, Clinton signed the papers. Hmm. Hmm. Clinton and Mr. Siri got back to the elevators, only to find an out-of-order sign. Well, 13 flights is quite a bet for Clinton, even on his own. Surprisingly, he did just fine wrestling the limp Mr. Siri down the flights. Well, two of them anyway. Unfortunately, Mr. Siri found his own way down the remaining 11 stories. Finally, Clinton got him into the car in one piece and went back to Sunset Palms. After tucking him into his bed, Clinton dusted himself off, regained his composure, and ran to Nurse Laidlaw Station. Come quick! Mr. Siri is... is... well, you know, he's ceased to be! He yelled. Nurse Laidlaw ran into Mr. Siri's room to find the corpse, but when they whipped the door open, there was Mr. Siri sitting upright. Poor Clinton stammered about being positive Mr. Siri was deceased. The nurse laid law explained Mr. Siri suffers from narcolepsy. He falls into a deep sleep when you least expect it. The nurse and the interns laughed. Old Mr. Siri wasn't laughing, though. Aside from wondering why his head hurt, he was his old self, calling for his jelly dessert and a bedpan. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine who decided to get a different job, like at a mortuary.